This is a podcast of the Radcliffe Department of Medicine. Professor Graham Ogg talks about the role of our skin as a barrier against infection. Hello, Graham. Hello. How does the surface immune system on our skin stop pathogens? There's many levels which the skin um, uh, stops pathogens. The first is the, the structural barrier function of the skin. We know that when we scratch ourselves, that acts as a focal point for, for infection. So the, the structural, physical presence of the skin is, is very important. But some pathogens will, will, will get past that point and then, that then activates components of the immune system. Uh, and that's split into the innate and adaptive immune uh, responses. The innate immune response is ready to go in the skin. It can work very quickly and it works very broadly against different types of pathogens. And uh, there are molecules that are important in the innate immune system and, and cells that are important. The molecules include antimicrobial peptides, which can bind and inactivate different viruses and bacteria and fungi. And in fact, these are being harnessed for new p potential antibiotic treatments in the future. Cells of the innate immune system include macrophages, natural killer cells, neutrophils, and these all have broad uh, anti-pathogen effects. But sometimes uh, the uh, pathogens get past the innate immune system, and that's when the adaptive immune system is, is activated. And this is a very powerful um, component of the immune response. It's, it's um, very specific, so an immune response to one a bacterium won't be effective against another bacterium. It's, it's highly specific but very powerful. It's very costly for the, the host to make such an uh, adaptive immune response, but nevertheless, when uh, pathogens have passed these various levels of, of defense, it, it, it is activated and, um, uh, and helps control uh, the further replication of the, the pathogen. And again, there are molecules and cells that are important. Molecules are, uh, amongst others, include antibodies. And antibodies bind uh, pathogens, bind bacteria, bind viruses, and that inactivates them. And cells of the adaptive immune system include T cells and B cells. And uh, these cells help coordinate all aspects of the immune response, both the adaptive and the in innate immune response. And what happens when these mechanisms don't work anymore? Well, that's one of the areas that we're investigating. Uh, one, one area of interest in our laboratory is the, um, uh, the pathogenesis or the cause of eczema. Uh, and uh, it, it, uh, it's becoming increasingly clear that uh, one of the first steps uh, in, in somebody developing eczema is that there might be relative barrier dysfunction of the skin. Uh, and so if there's barrier dysfunction, then infections and allergens and, uh, can enter the skin and induce an immune response, which then causes the inflammation in the skin, which the, the patient notes as um, uh, an inflammatory rash. Uh, and it, these are really important questions because um, by understanding all the steps in the pathway uh, through to uh, the, the disease that the patient's experiencing, one can identify new potential uh, points at which we can uh, uh, intervene and treat. Can this research help us design vaccines? Yes, as you know, many vaccines are delivered into the skin or just at least just beneath the skin. And uh, by understanding the skin immune system, we hope to be able to inform new approaches to vaccination in the future that might enhance vaccine, vaccine response in the future. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or 10 years? I, th I think actually it would be this recognition of the importance of the, of the skin barrier in, in um, eczema uh, um, disease. Um, until five or ten years ago, the prevailing belief was that it was the immune system that was primarily uh, contributing to the disease, that differences in how people handled different challenges would, would um, explain why some people developed eczema and other people didn't. But now um, there is this recognition that, that if there's barrier impairment, then uh, infections and, and other challenges can get into the skin. And, and actually the immune response that we're observing may be an entirely um, uh, predictable and expected immune response in, in the skin. Um, and uh, it, it illustrates, I think, the, the importance of understanding these steps because most of our treatments for eczema and, and uh, for related diseases such as asthma and hay fever uh, target the immune system. And it may be that we're missing a trick here, that we should be targeting the, the, the skin, the barrier function of the skin, and also the lungs and the, and the, the bowels as well for, for um, food allergy, as well as targeting the inflammatory response. And I think in the next five or 10 years, there'll be 
uh, new treatments which are, are focused more on targeting the, the, um, the linings, the skin and the, the, the lungs and the, and the bowel. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Eczema is very common. It affects 20 to 30 percent of children and, uh, and as I said is associated with asthma and hay fever and, and food allergies and these carry an enormous burden for, for families, children um, affected and um, and also an enormous health uh, economic implication for the for the NHS. So these are very uh, um, uh, broad, uh, common diseases w of which there is an unmet clinical need. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? The the research that we do is very it is very close to the patient. So I'm a dermatologist and I see patients each week and um, with patient's consent they kind of give samples, blood samples for which we analyze the immune response um, and the, the, the findings that we develop in those studies we then translate back to, to new uh, clinical studies for the patients. Thank you Graham. Thank you.